Hello, I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telecom TV, and welcome to this session on virtualization for Kubernetes and containers. Application and service containerization have taken the IT world by storm, enabling workloads to be packaged and deployed across environments more easily than ever before. The wide adoption of the Kubernetes platform brought automation and scaling to containers and is widely embraced in the telecom industry. Yet one of the more persistent questions is how should organizations run Kubernetes on hypervisors or directly on bare metal? Well, let's find out what our guests think and I am delighted to introduce Kit Colbert, who is CTO of VMware, and Rajesh Gadia, Vice President, Network and Edge Group, CTO, Network Platforms Group at Intel. Hello, both of you. Thanks for joining us on the show. Kit, there's a lot of debate in the market right now that bare metal is a better alternative to VMs for Kubernetes and containers. Can you elaborate on this and why you feel VMs are the preferred method? Uh, it is a question that, that comes up from time to time that we hear from customers. And I think the thinking there is that they look at hey, there's this kind of this extra level of virtualization and that's no longer needed now that we have containers and Kubernetes and so forth. But the reality, and you know, there's thinking, oh, we can get faster performance without virtualization um, and so forth. But the reality is a bit more nuanced than that. What we find when we talk to customers is that the, the virtualization abstraction layer really enables powerful management capabilities, even for virtualized workloads. Uh, it enables greater levels of consolidation. It enables greater levels of flexibility. If you look at Kubernetes, uh, you may want to have multiple Kubernetes clusters for various reasons. Uh, you might need different versions. Uh, you might have different folks you want to enable as admins of those clusters. And so if you have a, a bare metal situation, you can have each of those Kubernetes clusters all on their own hosts or set of hosts, and that you might get really low utilization. In fact, that's what we find much of the time. And so virtualization is still a really powerful abstraction because it allows you to do that consolidation, to get that flexibility of API-driven management, and to do that in a fully automated way now with Kubernetes. And on the other point on performance, by the way, We've shown very clearly that there, there really is no uh, virtualization overhead, so to speak, uh, anymore. All virtualization now on the compute side is done, you know, offloaded to the processor. So there's not really much we're doing in software. And so <clears throat> what you find is that when you, when you look at the performance studies, oftentimes uh, virtualized systems are neck and neck with bare metal systems. And sometimes even, and we do have this data, we've shown where virtualized systems can actually be faster. Than, than bare metal systems. And that's because of the optimizations we do at a hypervisor operating system level where we're a bit better than Linux in certain ways. So long story short, virtualization uh, came about because of its power both for consolidation and for improved management. And that's true of traditional workloads as well as these modern workloads running on Kubernetes. Thanks, Kit. And Rajesh, how does FlexRAN help operators be confident in the performance of their disaggregated virtualized RAN? Yeah, thank you, first of all, to uh, have me on this panel. And it's great to partner with Kit and have this discussion about virtualizing the radio access network. So in order to realize the full benefits of 5G, the radio access network or RAN needs to be virtualized and disaggregated. Now, this is the journey that we've been on for a while. And we've built an important software stack called FlexRAN that enables you to build your RAN with cloud native APIs. So Intel FlexRAN reference architecture is an off the shelf, general purpose server-based cloud native platform that contains components of Intel processors, ethernet and hardware accelerators. So the first question to ask is what KPIs are operators looking to deliver as they transform their radio access network? 5G networks, as you know, demand high level of flexibility, scalability, and automation to meet the latency, coverage, capacity needs, and to support various algorithms, analytics, and application needs. Overall, the operators are looking for optimal TCO and performance per watt per dollar. This is exactly what FlexRAN delivers. So Intel FlexRAN reference architecture enables the highest level of flexibility, with programmable onboard features, memory, and I.O. The FlexRAN 
scales from small to large capacities with the same set of components running different applications or functions ranging from the RAN to the core network and data center, including edge computing and media, enabling economies of scale and new revenue opportunities for the operators. FlexRAN reference architecture can run various RAN workloads on standard server platforms due to the general purpose nature of its architecture. So aside from L1 signal processing for 5G, FlexRAN also provides layer two building blocks to give customers a one-stop layer one plus layer two reference design on a standard server platform. Additionally, as uh, the ORAN architecture begins to gain momentum in the industry, we are focused on utilizing AI capabilities for building what are called as RAN intelligent controllers or RICs, both near real-time RIC and non-real-time RIC, along with X apps and R apps. The idea is to use time series based traffic data and real-time platform telemetry to gain efficiency in radio networks via AI driven automation. So FlexRAN has been hardened and deployed in production in many operator radio access networks and is proven to deliver the KPIs in operator networks around the globe. It has become the reference platform of choice for virtualizing the RAN. Thanks Rajesh. And Kit, when it comes to VRAN and ORAN, why is running RAN workloads on a virtualized environment rather than bare metal the better decision for today and tomorrow? Yeah, this is a good question. It's something that, that we think about a lot. And what's interesting about it is I see the same sort of progression, not only within the telco space, but from a lot of our enterprise customers as well. This notion of going from traditional hardware-based solutions to virtualization, VMs, to container-based solutions. And I think that's the same progression we're seeing here in terms of traditional you know, physical RAN devices to <clears throat> virtualized RAN to the, the new ORAN, you know, beautiful future, right? And it's imperative that you support these different mechanisms simultaneously because you cannot reinvent the world in one day, right? It takes time, it takes years actually to, to move through this. And so I think one of the really powerful aspects of virtualization is that it gives you that flexibility and optionality to move forward at the pace that makes the most sense for you. One of the challenges that I see a lot with customers is that when they go all in, they're trying to reinvent the world too quickly. The reality is we can't predict what's gonna happen next. And if they've committed to this two year timeline or whatever it is to rewrite everything, they're not gonna be able to adapt to other uh, changes in the industry or other business needs as they might arise. So I think that the really powerful thing about this platform is that it is very much a, a future ready platform. It leverages virtualization at its core to do this. As I mentioned before, even if you get to the point somewhere in the future where you are running, you know, completely containerized workloads, all CNFs, right? And you've gotten uh, past or, or moved beyond all the VNFs, <clears throat> it's still extraordinarily powerful and in fact, the best platform for those workloads. And so, yes, I do believe that leveraging virtualization is both the platform for today and absolutely the platform for tomorrow. And Rajesh, what type of testing does Intel do with partners such as VMware based on their FlexRAN architecture? Yeah, great question. And um... I might actually take a step back and look at why are operators enthusiastic about Open RAN? It is really because of the many benefits it brings. It is foundational for implementing a cloud native, intelligent and composable RAN. It accelerates the speed with which innovative solutions can be adopted. And it enables automated deployment of applications as microservices, increasing the speed of deployment and lowering the operational expenses. So at the same time, the level of hardware software disaggregation in the open RAN architecture can result in a large integration and verification burden for operators and system integrators that are working on behalf of operators. So understandably, they want to reduce the amount of work involved in component integration and cross vendor coordination as much as possible to get to you know, solutions quickly to our customers. The hardware and software ingredient production tested at each individual component level is therefore very important, but it's not sufficient to achieve faster time to market. So what Intel and VMware are doing is we are going much further by doing this pre-integration work. The target hardware system, including all the components, CPU, accelerators, uh, NIC cards, 
platform ingredients like BIOS and Linux, uh, VMware OS and Telco Cloud Platform, and uh, Intel's FlexRAN software. These are all integrated and validated together for ensuring compatibility of releases of the various ingredients, key features, performance KPI conformance, and adherence to stability criteria. So the entire process is fully automated in a CI CD or continuous integration, continuous deployment setup with multiple levels of testing. Each software component is automatically instantiated as a CNF or containerized network function or a VNF, virtualized network function, and updated independent of the rest of the subsystem. It's tested at the component level to meet the component level criteria prior to onboarding um, to the staging and testing area for the next level of subsystem level validation. So by having multiple of such gates with test criteria at each level, it's easier to isolate issues and fix them prior to the next level of integrated testing. The deployed software configuration is continuously operated and monitored to find issues, we troubleshoot and learn from the process to improve the automation of infrastructure software and also the test cases. So VMware and Intel are also establishing uh, the CI CD setups that mimic each of our end customers. So I want to actually take the opportunity to thank uh, Kit and VMware team for their strong commitment and collaboration in establishing this joint development to transform the 5G radio access networks. And Kit, why is it important to be able to run multiple workloads on one server in the RAN? Couldn't you just do this on bare metal? Yeah, I think it's incredibly important. And again, goes back to some of the, the core values uh, or capabilities of, of virtualization, because it, it enables a lot of this flexibility. As I've talked about, we're very much in a mixed mode world where we're gonna have some VNFs and some CNFs. We need these to be able to run side by side. We need to be able to take uh, efficient use of that underlying infrastructure and have optionality and flexibility as things change, right? As new workloads come in. But I think what's really exciting as we look forward is this opportunity to really build a platform there to potentially allow third parties to come in and add their value. This is like huge in terms of additional monetization opportunities. But now think about this, you now have additional third party code running in that RAN environment. And there, security becomes really, really important. This is something I actually <laughs> neglected to mention earlier, probably should have mentioned it in the first question, which is this notion of virtualization providing the best security. I think that's a really, really key thing. If you look at the public clouds, they all leverage virtualization. Uh, if they're going to put two tenants on a single physical host, they will not allow just two, let's say, containers from two different tenants to run side by side. They need to leverage virtualization for that clean multi-tenant isolation. And so I think that's another really key aspect. And so we talked you know, previously about this platform for the future. And I think that's exactly uh, the point here is that you really can think much more broadly about this and enable additional partners to come in and add value uh, for the end users. I completely agree with Kit, right? So, and I just want to add a couple of points here. Um, it, this um, transformation of radio access network is a little bit of a journey. And the reality of how this is going to evolve is we are going to actually be in a mixed mode. So today we have a lot of um, virtualized network functions. Um, as it evolves to more of uh, cloud native deployments, we're going to actually need a mix of VNFs and CNFs. And the whole purpose of opening up the radio access network is um, so you can actually deploy new services on top of it. So third party applications, perhaps uh, value added services. So the operators can monetize the RAN like it was saying. And so um, a battle hardened production quality system that can address other needs of real commercial deployments, such as uh, service assurance and observability, such as uh, security, such as uh, isolation and uh, confidential computing. These are all very important and uh, as such, when I sort of like look at um, the VMware cloud framework and vSphere, which have uh, been released now with Tanzu with uh, Kubernetes native APIs, um, I'm super excited because it actually gives uh, a really nice uh, software framework and uh, tool for production deployments for the operators as they transform their radio access network. 
Kit and Rajesh, thank you both very much for joining us for this session on virtualization for Kubernetes and containers. Thank you.